day one of the build and we're a half hour into the project already. So of course first part of the Redneck Roller Coaster project is tear down. Remove front plastic bumper cover, remove little radiator grill thing or whatever it's called. Remove both headlights. We have to remove the master cylinder. We already have a power brake master cylinder mounted on the chair device which is exactly the same as this one. I've removed the speed control for the cruise. Remove the air cleaner to get access to where the inner tie rod ends mount to the center of the rack down there. I have to unbolt those bolts. I have to unbolt the clamper bolts that hold the rack to the firewall. Take the steering column out and flip the rack over 90 degrees so the steering column shaft points this way so it can run up to the seat area. And by doing that, I have to modify this tie rod arm, add some wiggles to it to clear things, and I have to manipulate and maneuver the power steering lines so they're still functional and don't break and clear your tie rod. Then I'll have to remove the struts from the vehicle, disassemble them, and put inner springs inside so there's two springs in each strut and I like to use Honda Accord springs and that compensates for the extra weight that will be on it so it will still ride level. Well that was simple enough just some bolts and clips. Now first thing we notice is the front bumper assembly is slightly different than the old car which means I don't need that plastic. The next thing is this vehicle has energy absorbing corrugated bumper shocks. I don't like that as much as the gas charge energy absorbing shocks which are much sturdier. So I'm going to have to more securely weld these plates to the vehicle. And I guess they already are welded to the bumper. And I'll have to decide whether I'm going to use this bumper or the very similar bumper that I saved off the old car. Well, now to crawl under the dash and start removing the steering column and bolts that hold the master cylinder and brake pedal assembly on and the cover for the gear shifter area so I can remove the gear shifting cable from the console shifter. One more thing to mention. Unfortunately it doesn't have the faster 2.4 motor but this is the venerable 2.2. The only things that go wrong with them is water pumps and head gaskets. So this is exactly like the last car I had. So that's good enough for me. Everything should work exactly the same. And of course, didn't need the spare tire, so just removed all that unnecessary weight so it tips better. Now back to getting all that spaghetti out of the way and rewiring it for the Chrysler steering column that's on a seat assembly that's in the shop. And of course, didn't need the spare tire, so just removed all that unnecessary weight so it tips better. Now back to getting it all that spaghetti out of the way and rewiring it for the Chrysler steering column that's on a seat assembly that's in the shop. Well, we're deep into cutting wires, but that used to be from the remote, remote starter it had on it. So, got the steering column almost out, just one more bolt. Hey! Hey! I didn't even hear you coming! This is the only car you can sneak up on somebody! <laughs> that's for sure! Wow! Sure is quiet! <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably sell the catalytic converter for more than we paid for the car. Yeah. <laughs> ah, who needs steering wheels at Dave's farm, eh? At least, who needs one inside the car? <laughs> I don't, we need one in a car. Next, who needs brakes inside your car? Or a gas pedal or anything like that? Idiot in a car. I do. <laughs> He's such a sweetie. He's my first passenger in the new redneck roller coaster. <laughs> hey baby. Well, I, now I finally had my first James in the car. <laughs> yep. Don't tell the cops. <laughs> Hi James. Cadage. Hi James. <laughs> Peekaboo. <laughs> Without a steering wheel. Yeah, but he's going to be my helper kitty today. Now that the brake booster is out, I can get good access to get the steering rack all unclamped and tie rods removed and then flip it so the input shaft is pointing this way and then I have to make an L bracket to reattach the tie rod ends to.
out of angle iron. Got both clamper things off. Now the rack is able to be manipulated and moved around and flipped over, but I first got to modify and twist those lines because they interfere when I'm flipping over the rack. Those are the power steering high pressure hydraulic hoses. Well now you can see why these cars are most suitable for this application because the steering rack is mounted halfway up on the firewall unlike most other cars where it's mounted down below on the subframe and you can unhook those clamper things in the steering rack flip the steering rack over like we did and put the clamper things back on and it still fits so it's got this rubber u-jointy thing here so that'll adjust to any angle I need to run my steering shaft out to my contraption and now I have to custom modify the long tie rod on that side a little bit. This side needs no modification. I just need to make the angle L bracket now to reattach the tie rods to. Simple as that. And this totally clears the transmission and all the workings under the hood to run the shaft out. I just have to cut a slot in the hood like the last car. Oh, this motor's got gremlins. And he got there all by himself. He just came from underneath the car. He sure is a good kitty helper. <laughs> He's well trained, right, Rick? There he is. How's my uh, adjust that carburetor? <laughs> how's my throttle body doing? Any problems with the flow? <laughs>